Hi, my name is Ken Asterson. I wrote the microbiome prescription website. And this is a video for the autism microbiome prescription um, blog. And what I'm going to do is I'm doing a study of two kids, both autistic in the same family, a son and a daughter. And I described in the blog post the action plan, what I'm going to do to get, get a consensus report. I thought it would be good to walk through the steps for one of the two um, siblings so you can see how it's done. And it's, although it's on paper, it looks like a mountain of work. It is really not that much effort. Um, it's just a matter of doing it. So I'm doing the sun and the sun action plan is in the um, link notes. And the first thing is we're going to do is we are going to pick autism from special studies. And that gave a suggestion of things there. Now, if we go back and we go down, and the second thing was because of almost a hyperactivity of the person, and we do have high anxiety being a probable symptom, being that the, the um, microbiome seems to be there, the high activity and anxiety maybe different sides of, of the same coin or at least different sides of the same dice so let's click that and we'll get the suggestions there and the third one is depression which came up of being significant um with autistic kids detecting depression can be a little bit difficult because often it may get masked as moodiness so we go there and we have there. I know this cloning deficiency shows up again. That was in one of the earlier ones. I'll talk about chlorine deficiency basically mean nothing more than reducing the amount of chlorine in the dye, which usually means eggs and a couple other things like that. So those are the first thing. And then the last thing, which is a little bit of an oddball is chronic fatigue syndrome with IBS. Um, and the reason I'm doing it is because of the match in terms of periodic symptoms to it. It is not totally unusual for myself. I'm a high artistic individual. I also have dealt with, um, chronic fatigue syndrome. And I suspect there is a, um, path from one over to the others. Although again, with autism, Chronic fatigue syndrome may not get diagnosed easily because the autism diagnosis dominates um, and the person quiets down, less active. <sighs> Parents are happy. The fact that the kid is suffering, some of the parts of chronic fatigue syndrome may not be that dominant. So let's just get it done there. And we have the suggestions there. So now we're going back and we have up fortunately we have already built in the um, autism core analysis which comes from the u.s national library of medicine um, we only have six bacteria matches the other ones we have much more and the um, national library of medicine six is a reasonable but let's just click that and see what is there and in this case oh we have all oddball things and we have ah keyword up here please log in i lost the um connection the session face out it happens occasionally um i may have have some um refiguring on the just give me a second to log back in and log back in and i'll just click that one and interesting um not sure i'm probably have to just do something <sighs> something is fishy there oh okay i know why um Okay, uh, it happens and I, I need to revisit the page on logic. I may be mucking something up there, but okay, let's go on regardless. Uh, and then we have box whiskers, 
which is down here and box whiskers is here and we will just do standard box whiskers we do have new choices here and they are added because most of the special studies found that what was statistically significant was too low levels was what was significant for bacteria not too high but too low you can include both or you can say just give me the low or if you have a different mindset which some people are you can say i say no it must be because i have too much of it if you if that is your belief keyword belief you can do it um i'm not i'm trying to avoid being dogmatic or, or whatever i'm giving you options and choices to proceed as you see fit so we're going to do box whiskers and we're going to go back uh, and last one is Kaltoff Mall Drop. Okay, so we have now done a bunch of them. And if you go down to the bottom here, you see we have eight packages. So we have eight packages of suggestions. And now we're going to look at the... Um, consensus report by just clicking here first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to simply download the suggestions um, so that we can come back and look at it later and now we see the things that are there um, let me just make the screen a little bit better uh, So when we end up with consensus report, we end up having everything there. And to a quick reminder, the numbers are based on a little bit of a convoluted for many people, um, mainly because we're having to deal with fuzzy data. The take is a function of how many things are shifted in the right direction by a number of studies, sorry, number of things that are to substance shifts in the right direction, factor in the number of studies. And the result is you, you can get positive and negative. Number here is a number of items that it is, comes out being suggested. Remember we had eight samples, so six of them says, this is what you should be taking and uh, so you can go down and you can go through and take a look through the list um licorice which is one of my favorites is there uh sack and blueberries another favorite there so basically i leave it to the um person to do it what i'm going to do is because we could be dealing with probiotics i'm going to just click probiotics and see what the list of probiotics are going down the list you want to focus on ones which are occurring more often the take count is higher uh, for example simple for e. coli is one of those next one that comes out is general biotics equilibrium there and then those are the top ones you do have a lot more there but you notice that we are on the first page of three and we have already moved over into some negative in other words Roughly speaking, 75% of probiotics are probably not recommended. Small number are. So that is something too important to remember from the consensus report. Now I'm going to flip back to changing there. And we are going down to another special section. And, oops. Uh, okay. Okay, finally found it. Um, it is on the Changing Microbiome page. It is getting AI results from the oats. So I'm going to click that. And down here we have the numbering system from the oats. And we have check marks of whether or not oats reported high or low. If 
from this information, it will calculate or attempt to calculate out which probiotics it is. So that's basically the process. I'm going to pause for the moment and start checking things off. Okay, I finished doing the checkout. So now you notice sometimes there's a blank on one spot or another, and that is because we don't have any information on how to do adjustments of this particular enzyme. What we're doing is we're looking at what of uh, uh, we're looking at what the compounds and chemicals being produced, etc. So we have done the check marks. We click submit, and down at the bottom we have the ones which are likely to have a positive impact and um, we can sort that by impact probably from decreasing so we end up having a list again all this list is by the name of the retail probiotics because the retail probiotics contain multiple different species in it so a couple of interesting things which we spot uh for example, the mood probiotics there, which is a, um, seems somewhat appropriate. Um, and then we have a bunch of other ones there. So, um, you can go in and you can, of course, just click on one of these and see what's in there. So what we see here is a whole stack of bacillus as being the, um, compound which are causing the changes. So, um, I'm just going to go and copy this across to my cheat sheet. And so I went and walked through that. And what I find common across all of them is this particular um, probiotic species is the common one. And you can walk through all of them, but you find that probably most of them has that particular species in it. Hence, that's probably the key takeaway from the um, OATS analysis. So now let's go on to the third one, which is hopping back in and changing microbiome. And it is the revised suggested probiotics. And there we have the key things. And I noticed one at the top is the um, E. coli, which we already had in our suggestion list um, at, underneath its training, the symbol four one. We now have a whole ton of other things sitting there, all of which are in prescriptive cysts or um, equilibrium. And, and then we have facility sectors, which is again, one of those which in the shows up via the oats tests um and what we have and subsidies which is again shows up at the oats test there it is so we have a whole bunch of agreements between um the three ways of doing it um not 100 percent match but we do have a very good consensus that way and basically it just sorting things out um between the three of them. Unfortunately, I haven't done a probiotic consensus report yet, but that's basically it. Um, and at this point of time, I think we have finished doing the sun.